How I Used Food to Win the Losing Game. My story is the same as many others. I got fat. I didn't mean to get fat. No one means to get fat. In fact, I was trying my damnedest not to get fat. The stereotypes of what fat people do did not apply to me. I wasn't overeating. I wasn't gorging on junk food. I wasn't lazy. I wasn't sedentary. Side note, these stereotypes are often wrong and quite dangerous. We have to do better as a society for trying to pigeonhole people who live in bigger bodies. Anyway, I was still fat. You see, I was doing everything I thought I was supposed to be doing not to be fat. I worked out almost every day. I was eating what I thought to be at the time anyway, a reasonable diet, or I wasn't eating at all, whatever suited me in the moment. I believed wholeheartedly, hook, line, and sinker, calories in, calories out. I have a long history of eating disorders, all in the name of not being fat. Fun fact, my diet history is older than the Harry Potter series. I won't take the time here to go too deeply into the trials, tribulations, triumphs, woes, successes, and failures of my health, as purely measured by my weight, of course, because in those days, that's all I felt to care about, that unfolded between the ages of 10 and 32, but I will tell you, it involved a ton of bad and unhealthy decisions based on misinformation, misunderstanding, and vanity, and included a hospitalization for reasons solely based on starvation and malnutrition. Don't worry, the story does get more positive. Just as I was about to start another workout routine that involved a crap ton of cardio or hit or something that would get my heart rate up and my sweat on because that's what you do, right? You sweat it out. Melt that fat. Let it seep through your pores. Newsflash. No, no, that's not how it works. But I digress. My dearest husband, who had never once in the course of our relationship mentioned his own body issues, came home and recommended that we take a long, hard look at our food. Huh. The skeptic that I was, I mean, let's be real. I had done so many things that didn't work. Why would this be any different? And besides, we didn't eat that poorly, or so I thought. So I pushed back a little, almost even got a little defensive. Who does this man think he is barging in here and telling me how to change? And God forbid what he wants to do make me feel worse. The irony in that train of thought, looking back, is laughable. I didn't care about my health. I never did. I cared about my weight, and my weight just kept climbing, even in the name of healthy actions. I eventually decided I have nothing to lose, or rather, I had too much to lose, however you may look at it, so we went all in. I dove into book after book after book, learning about food, fat, sugar, the food industry, government, and how it contributed to poor food choices, hormones, the problems with the seco mentality, metabolism... I soon realized I knew nothing about how food impacted the body, how the body responds, or how it works together to regulate weight. And in my quest to not be fat all of those years, I inadvertently set myself up to be exactly that. Whoops. It took months for me to see results or changes. Months! And even though I felt better and had more energy and had less joint pains, there were a ton of positive indicators that I completely ignored in the early days because all I cared about was weight. And I was so angry because I didn't see the changes that my husband saw. What I didn't know was happening was my body was healing. It was fixing all of the things inside. I was building trust with my body every time I nourished it. It was recovering from my decades worth of abuse and it needed time. And when I did give it that time, that consistency that it needed all those years, my weight just started coming down. I kept nourishing and it kept responding. I lost 70 pounds through eating. So here's what I did. I actually started eating regularly, even when I didn't feel hungry. I ate breakfast every single day. I ate lunch every single day. I ate dinner every single day. Now I know this seems counterintuitive. Eating when you're not hungry? Yeah, I had to. My metabolism was so down-regulated that I didn't get hunger cues. I had to make my body feel safe enough to function well enough to give me hunger cues. My metabolism was slow. Very, very slow. I had to stoke the fires with real food. I had to build trust back with my body through nutrient-dense foods. I also eliminated all exercise programs. I know this seems nutty, but I needed to focus my time and attention on learning food and how to get more comfortable cooking. Plus, 
exercise was too much of a stressor for my body at the time for it to heal. I didn't know that then, but I understand that now. My body was under so much duress that adding exercise on top of it was incredibly counterproductive. Exercise is a stress on our body. It's a stress we can leverage, but if we're not managing our stress, it's just another stress on the mountain of stress that our bodies must deal with. And when that mountain of stress gets chronically too high, much like the always present pile of laundry in the corner, our bodies store fat. More fat. Oops. I did, however, keep going on walks and I never stopped hiking. I also added in more fats, whole milk, half and half, heavy whipping cream, ground beef, eggs, nuts, avocados, olive oil, real fats that our bodies are well primed to handle, process, and use through our evolutionary needs. I focused on protein first. Always more protein, protein at every meal, protein in every snack, protein from real food sources, not protein bars, not protein shakes, real, honest to goodness, wholesome protein sources. I also eliminated all products with added sugars or sweeteners. This does not include natural sugars like fruits or vegetables. No stevia, no erythritol, no xylitol, no monk fruit, no aspartame, none of it. No added sweeteners. I did, however, sneak in some honey every now and again. But this step, this is the step that was really key to my journey, eliminating sugars and sweeteners so that I could get my taste buds back so that I could actually taste real food and enjoy real food and understand how delicious real food is. I also eliminated starches, including white potatoes, bread, pasta, rice, oats, all grains for that matter. This, now that I understand more about food, was maybe not as essential as the, as the point above with sugars. I do think I could have found the same or similar results had I used these kinds of starches intelligently, but in full transparency of my actual journey, I just eliminated them all because I wanted to manage my blood sugar and starches are just chains of sugars. Now, I don't feel any shame in the occasional piece of toast or a good homemade fry. I just know how to pair them well with a good combo of proteins and fats to lessen their impact on my blood sugar. Also, important note, I don't have a history of blood sugar issues. If you're a type 2 diabetic, this might be a point that you might want to maintain. I also eliminated all ultra-processed foods and started reading labels. If it had sugars or sweeteners in it, it had to go. Now, I know that doesn't sound fun, but it was actually fabulous. Because what I didn't have to do, what I didn't do, I didn't count anything. I didn't start counting calories or macros until way later when I was trying to gain weight through muscle. I also didn't go hungry for too long. It's normal and fine to go a little hungry sometimes, but I never intentionally restricted food for long periods of time, and that was wholly different than my previous attempts. Once my hunger cues started to actually work, I started to listen. I didn't exercise heavily. I didn't have to overdo cardio. I did eventually start running many, many months into my process, but not for the weight loss aspect. I had signed up to participate in a Ragnar because I really love that kind of stuff. And so I had to start training. But I assure you, I didn't start running to lose weight. I didn't eliminate all carbs. I focused on eating whole, minimally processed foods, which did reduce the number of carbs I ate naturally, but it was never a goal, and I never sought to demonize the entire category. I also didn't eliminate all of the foods that I loved. Instead, I modified them when I could. This included things like pizza, lasagna, pies, hot cocoa. I never felt like I was missing out. Be very careful with how you use this information. My journey is not your journey. We are different. Your needs and my needs are different. But what I do know is that whole minimally processed foods work. Eating nourishing foods works. Until next time, you guys, eat more, eat well, eat happy.